Hi guys and uh, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about the H1 Haley software. Now I must just let you know I am by no means an expert. I don't know what all of these uh, parameters do so I'm going to explain the ones that I know for sure. Uh, some of them I'll admit I just don't know what they do. So uh, yeah let's get cracking. Uh, you'll plug your um, H1 into your computer. Uh, after you've launched, you'll first launch the software and it should populate a port um, over here. If it doesn't populate a port and you've tried changing the USB cable, please go to your device manager and click on the, uh, the ports icon and it'll be, it'll say ST Micro Electronics Virtual Com Port. So double click that That'll open up a new little dialog box. Uh, then you select port settings. Then you select advanced. Once you've selected advanced, you can here then change the COM port. You can actually hard wire the COM port onto this uh, piece of hardware. So make that COM10 or whatever's nearest. Uh, then close all of these. Go OK, OK, OK. And then switch off the software, relaunch it, reattach your H1. And then you'll see that COM port that you assigned there. Let's say it's COM6, for instance. It'll pop up there and you can more than likely connect. Right, before we carry on, some of these pictures, it'll say disconnect here. That's because I'm just using screenshots. I don't need the heli connected for this. So we, came, we come to the main page. The first, look, uh, we're not going to talk about how to set up a brand new H1. There are videos out on that. I'm talking about uh, the casual flyer who wants to just change some settings. So I'm just going to go through some of these things here. So the tail gain, um, this is how fast the tail reacts to cyclic input. In other words, when you go up and down on, on your cyclic, you know, the, the helicopter is going up or it's coming down, uh, that will this tail gain will tell the tail how locked in it needs to be. If it's set to zero, for instance, uh, the helicopter might turn around slowly while it's hovering. And as you give a stick input to go up, it might turn even more. So also conversely, if it's too high, let's say we've put this to 100, uh, the tail might vibrate side to side. It'll go tuck, 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 tuck. And then you'll need to turn this down. Now from the factory, it's 73, which seems to be good for most uh, people. So that's tail gain. These other, these uh, next four at the bottom are just your radio inputs. So once you have a radio connected, you'll see these things moving. Uh, it says no RX signal at the moment, but uh, you'll see that they light up red or green. I can't remember now. And you'll be able to see the movements. You'll be able to check that all your switches are going in the right direction. Next we have the main rotor page and this is used to basically set the swash plate level by using the servo trim section and changing the maximum and minimum collective pitch as well as the zero point. Now exactly how to do that, uh, Flowering have released a video they explain it in great detail on how to use these parameters. Under normal circumstances, this page wouldn't uh, be of interest. The most, the, the very next uh, page is the uh, parameters page. And this is a very interesting page. I don't know what all of these are, so I'll go through them as best as I can. Swash gain. Uh, Flywing suggest in one of their videos, if your UH1 has a tail, wobble up and down to turn the swash gain down. So that must have something to do with uh, almost like the tail rotor gain, which is on the first page. Uh, this must be a similar thing over here. Dependent on the stabilization, how much the swash plate reacts. It's not directly a self stabilization button. I'm sure that this is very much like the tail gain um, 
so if it's if it's wobbling around in the sense that it feels a bit loose, uh, don't know how to explain it. You might turn the swash gain up just like you would the tail if it's uh, wandering around, and if it's vibrating, if the if the uh, swash plate is vibrating, then you would turn this down. I'm assuming. I, I can't guarantee that. Swash exponential. Now the swash exponential is like an exponential on your radio, which is basically a dead zone in the middle part of the stick. So if you're going left, right, forward, back, it's basically this setting tells the swash plate how quickly to react to your input. So if you have the swash exponential at zero, as an extreme, then every tiny movement you make on the radio will be translated to the swash plate, which will make quite a jerky um, helicopter. Conversely, if you set this swash exponential to 100, then you'll have to make huge stick input movements to get the swash plate to even behave at all. So factory is 50, you start there, it's a good setting. Uh, if you want it a bit more direct, then you could turn this down to let's say 30, 25, thereabouts, and it'll be a bit more responsive. Agility is basically what it says. How agile is the is the helicopter? It starts off in normal mode over here, and weirdly enough, the percentage, the more precise it needs to get, the lower the percentage goes. So that is also a bit of a weird one you'd expect agility 100 percent to be super agile and zero to be sluggish but it's actually the other way around so i've set mine to 30. Uh, i kind of like it there now this is the these are the bell settings please don't copy my settings this is for me um my airwolf is at zero because it's just not agile enough and i think it's got to do with the roll rate that i've got up here somewhere at so 65 70 percent i might take it the other way and see if that improves things tail rate this is how fast the tail will spin around so if you turn this to slow and you give a rudder input the tail the heli the heli will rotate very slowly if you make that fast let's say you go to 70 then small amounts of stick input will make the tail jump left and right more quickly so that's what the tail rate is for this is not the same as the tail gain which we had on the, on the first page remember that was uh, for for torque uh, that counteracts the torque how strong the the tail must hold that helicopter in a position when you apply torque which is basically uh, um, forward backwards up and down uh, collective compensation we when i say we I've sourced, scoured the internet. I cannot find what this collective compensation is. If somebody knows, please put it in the comments below so that we all learn something. But collective compensation, if I look at the words, this could be a very bad Chinese translation. Uh, collective pre-compensation, in, in fact. It's set at 10%. I've never moved it. I don't know what it does. So I'll be honest there. I have no idea. Uh, we come on to self-stabilization. Now these are parameters that are only affected in GPS and attitude mode, not in 3D mode. Although, just by the way, this says Acro 3D over here. Things that you change on this side also affect it in attitude mode. Not so much in GPS mode, more in attitude mode. Anyway, so self-stabilization. That is uh, when you let go of the sticks, not when you're flying forward and then let it go. That's a, that's a different parameter. Just how how much of a stabilization uh, effect do you want? So if you uh, flying, let's say you give a left aileron and you let go, it might drift a little bit and then slowly start stabilizing. Uh, if you have this set to let's say ten. And conversely, if you've set this to 80 and you let go, it's not the braking force, that's something else. 
then it will stabilize and get back to horizontal more quickly. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stop its position when it's in GPS mode. Um, I haven't really fiddled with this. I've just left it at 50. Fixed braking force. Pretty much was it what it says. So you're in GPS mode. You're flying forward full speed. And you let go the sticks. And then the helicopter will sort of back up and stop either very slowly and take its time if this is let's say down to 20 or very rapidly and look quite unnatural if it's let's say set to 75 it'll be very abrupt so i've set mine to 35 uh, look I, I don't fly in gps mode anymore but when i still was then this just looked the most natural to me it didn't jerk around uh, and it just came to a nice little stop. Maximum flight speed. I see this goes to almost 100. I don't know if it'll reach 100. Um, 80, 80 kilometers is a good speed. It's very, it's, it's pretty fast enough. So uh, when you're flicking between standard, soft and sports mode, you'll see that these parameters do change, uh, particularly the maximum flight speed. Altitude hold sensitivity. So let's say you've got this at zero and your, your sticks are in the middle and there's a bit of wind buffeting and it pushes the helicopter up and it'll take its time to stabilize and start holding position again. Conversely, at the 95 where it's, where it's set from the factory, it'll hold um, altitude pretty well. Uh, so I wouldn't really fiddle with that. Um, uh, 3D security on and off. What this does is if you're upside down, let's say you're in 3D mode and you're 10 meters high doing some tricks, when it reaches the set height, which here is indicated by 8 meters, it will revert immediately to GPS mode, even if it's upside down. So if it's upside down and you come crashing down to below this uh, height, 8 meters in this case, it'll revert straight to GPS mode. Uh, in which case you need to go up again, go back to 3D mode, flip it over so that it's the right way around, and you can ca carry on flying. So that's, what's, that's what 3D security is for. On top you'll see maneuverability soft mode. The helicopter reacts very gingerly. Um, I haven't tried that, but just looking at the settings when I went through it the other day, I can see that the speed is very slow. It's it's a very docile helicopter. Standard flight mode is the standard uh, shipped version. And just as a matter of interest, in any of these modes, you can set up all of this as you like, and it'll behave exactly the same. In other words, if you're in soft mode and you change all of these settings to the way you want it, it'll behave exactly as if it were in sport mode and you had the same settings. So that's just, by the way, these soft, standard and sport are just basically presets uh, that you can have. Uh, unfortunately, they are not uh, selectable via the radio. You have to connect and then switch. But uh, just start in standard, mo standard mode, fiddle with these and you probably will never go into sport mode. But if you want to not fiddle with them and you want to see the difference, by all means, go to sports mode, take it for a fly, and if, if you find the helicopter is, is too, um, is a bit wild for you, too fast, too whatever, just go back to standard flight mode. So the last page we have is the sensor page. Well, this is where we calibrate the GPS and the compass. It's called magnetometer calibration. It calibrates both of them. Now there's two ways to do this. Uh, you can either leave it connected and in which case you'll switch off the automatic restart. And you need to do this outside. Don't do this inside, please. Or if you are, if you can only connect this inside, then you will select automatic restart. You will need a battery on your helicopter. So that when you disconnect, uh, that it's still got power. So if you're going to do this uh, calibration and you want to do it outside, but you haven't got a laptop, then you press automatic restart. 
you press magnetometer calibration, you unplug the heli. Now don't forget it's still got power because um, you've attached a flight battery. You'll go outside, you'll do the dance of joy, and at some point uh, you'll hear a beep, beep beep. And that means that the, the H1 has rebooted and that's what this automatic restart is for. Then you know you've done all the movements that you possibly can. It's uh, um, it's calibrated itself and it's rebooted. So that's what that is for. Here's the, uh, you can also read, if you if you are outside, you can read uh, how many GPS uh, satellites you have. Um, low battery protection. You'll see on this particular page, it's set to 3.6 volts, but that's because I set it. Um, I was just playing with it. I think the factory is 3.75, I believe. Let me have a quick look. No, yeah, I believe it's 3.75. And I recommend switching this off because if your load protection is on and you're a new pilot and you're not aware of how long you've been flying because you haven't put a timer or, or you don't have a LiPo voltage alarm on your, uh, your helicopter, you might be blissfully flying along and you're under a tree or under a gazebo. Of course, at that point, you would have lost GPS signal anyway. And the helicopter suddenly decides that uh, it's reached its low battery and it's now going to kick into return to home. So now, if in that case, if you're under under a tree, it's of course going to climb up, hit the tree, and that's an accident waiting to happen. So I would switch this off and put a low voltage uh, alarm in your helicopter. Guys, um, I can't think of anything else. Um, I hope this helps you a little bit. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.